Welcome to the Commanders Coalition Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Williams. And I'm your host, Jacob Moss. Today, we're going to be talking about The List. So, what is The List? So, The List is a, it's a list of 300 different cards that were reprinted in set boosters throughout Magic the Gathering's, his, Magic the Gathering's history. So, The List is a basically a separate set. It's yeah. listed as a separate set. And um, it, it's, uh, they, a list cards appear in 25% of set boosters. Um, from Zendikar Rising to any current set. So it started in Zendikar Rising. And they took up a token slot in each pack. So um, uh, 25% of packs will have, instead of a token or an ad, it'll have an ad card, it'll have a uh, set or a, a list card. And just going to clarify, it's only in set boosters, yep, not draft set, boosters. It's not in draft boosters. It's um, uh, That's why, if you're wondering why uh, set boosters are a little bit more expensive than... Um, then draft boosters that's that's why is because uh they also think have two rares in them but um so yeah so uh obviously different rarities are more rare so mythics you're gonna get mythics a lot less than you need commons yep. so yeah so usually the mythics are you know a little more expensive yeah and it's a way that wizards has reprinted some more expensive cards right so a lot of the cards uh, some of them are not good examples but some some good examples uh would like you know there'll be a really expensive card and then they'll get reprinted in the list and it will be half the price so yeah so um we're gonna go on to the next section which is yeah. rotation so uh the list actually has its own rotation so every time a set comes out a new set comes out um some cards will get removed and added to the list so it'll always be at 300 but they'll remove and add some uh, cards to the list yep so, so yeah every new set since endicar rising has made changes to the list so yep so uh and every time a new set comes out and they make changes we'll make a video about it um it'll won't be very long i'm sure it'll be like 10 minutes if that uh but it'll be like a separate video we'll post that'll be just new list changes you know quick short video um so that's about it for the rotation so uh next we're going to talk about just the most expensive cards most expensive cards so that are on the list uh, we're not going to like list all of them but a we'll few of a the good ones that are still on the list are Demonic Tutor, Vampiric yep. Tutor. Um, a good one that was on the list before was Cavern of Souls. That was like an $80 card, which yeah. was pretty good. Sakasuma Student, I believe, uh, is a card that's pretty expensive. It's around 60 bucks, So that's a pretty expensive card you can pull. I, act I actually think that went up when uh, Kamigami and Dynasty was released. But So if you're wondering how to tell if it's oh, a set, yeah. bo set that's true. booster card. Or a booster list card. card. List card. In a set booster, if you get one, it will have a little planeswalker symbol in the bottom left corner. Yep. And then it will have its own set symbol. So it won't be the new one from the new set. Yes, yeah, so if you pull an ancient tomb, lucky if you do, but if you do pull an ancient tomb, it'll have the Tempest uh, uh, set symbol, not like Strixhaven or actually it wouldn't be Strixhaven because it wasn't. It's strict. Ancient tomb is not on the list in Strixhaven, but uh, in like Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Um, it won't have that logo, or it won't have that set symbol. It'll have the Tempest set symbol, but it will have a Planeswalker symbol in the bottom left corner. Yep. So there's no way to tell uh, what, like if you were to, uh, if you see a list card, there's no way to tell which which side it came out of. Yep, it's you won't their, know what yeah. pack it was open from, but that doesn't change the value at all. No. So. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, if you were to pull like a Cavern of Souls, which isn't on the list anymore, like he said, uh, like right now, it'd be really weird. But it wouldn't, yeah. you know, there would be no way to show. So, yeah. So, uh, some other expensive cards, you know, Ancient Tomb, like I mentioned. Um, you know, he mentioned Cavern of Souls was used to be on the list. Uh, but, you know, you got, uh, there's quite a bit of expensive cards that are on the list. And a lot of them are Commander Staples. Yep. So, if you Like Thrumming Stone. Thrumming Stone. Well, that's not a staple. <laughs> In some decks. Uh, Commander Staple right there, Thrumming Stone. So, yeah. So, uh, that's about it for, you know, the actual video about the list uh it's very short um not not a very long video at all i mean you know it's not there's not much there's to not talk a about, whole lot to right? talk about but we wanted to put out a video that because there's not a lot of videos out there that explain the list like yeah i never knew that there was it rotated i thought that once a card was added to the list it never got removed so it's interesting to learn that um kind of disappointing but i'm sure you know eventually they'll add them back in it's like just a rotation obviously so yeah um and in block sets uh each set in the block will still rotate the set or rotate the okay. list so yeah just thought i'd mention that too 
So uh, we're going to move on to the weekly card section. Um, if you don't remember from last uh, ep or ep last episode or if you haven't watched any of our videos yet, the weekly card is a random card we generate through Gatherer and we just talk about it. So, yep. so this week is the first week that we actually have a decent card. Yeah, exactly. It's, and it's our first commander too. Yeah, It's Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, which is a 2-2 two -two for two generic, a green and a blue with Ward 2. And then it says, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, Twice that many tokens are created instead. So, I was similar to a doubling season effect without yep. the counters. So, obviously, it's a lot less powerful than doubling season because yep. there's a lot less ways to instantly win, but it's in the command zone. And it also has ward two, so you can protect it. So, decks that are a little bit more reliant on their commander, you know, having a little bit of protection helps there. Um, it's definitely a fun deck to build around because it can lead to some pretty big turns where you can make a yep. whole bunch of stuff, but it's tokens, so it's kind of hard to do a lot and then win that turn unless you know you kind of need to it to stick around a rotation unless you have an extra turn spell yeah um has protection on itself ward two which is nice yep. um it's definitely a fun card to build around yep and it actually has pretty good pretty good decent spots in the 99 too um it's a very popular card in the 99 very as well. powerful effect that a lot of decks like to load up as much of that as they can like a deck like the a deck that has this in the nine nine will also have doubling season, like all the all the one one counter ones, all the counter ones, you know, all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So, uh, that's about it for the. Not too much to say about it. It's just a really fun, it's good just card. very powerful, very popular in commander. Came out in the pre con that uh, Essex was in. So, it's around. It's like a couple couple bucks for the for the normal version. So not, not too expensive. So yeah, um, so our our next section is the adjournment, um, which if you don't haven't watched any of our, video, any of our videos yet, it's where we discuss Magic the Gathering content not related to the video. So today we're going to be discussing the most expensive cards we've ever pulled. So, yep. um, why don't you go first? So I guess I guess it depends on what exactly we're talking about. So for me, the most expensive card I just normal pull, normally pulled was a Hazard at the Fervent, which at the time was like thirty dollars because it was really good and standard. Um, I think didn't play standard at the time so yeah. i don't know but i'd assume that's where it was good um but if we go by like drafts in a draft i pulled a 40 dollar card that went into the pot and then i won it so i guess that counts and then there's another draft where there was a doubling season that was opened by someone else and then i won the draft so i got that too so that was pretty good so uh do you want also we should also mention kind of uh for the list uh so, do you want to say the most expensive card you've ever pulled that was on the list? I pulled a Phyrexian Obliterator, which was a $20 card. Yep. Um, so, for me, not as exciting as is, but uh, I pulled a Scourge of the Throne, which is around 6 to 7 bucks right now, I believe. So, you know, still up there, but not as not as much as Always a fun card to pull out of pack when it's more than $5. Yeah. So. so, it's also a pretty decent card, too. So, yeah. not worth $20, I would say, but pretty pretty good. Um. So for me, the most expensive card I've ever pulled. Uh, I haven't pulled, or I haven't gotten really any from a draft uh, that were expensive. Usually, they all got taken up because I didn't win. Um, but uh, for the most expensive card I ever pulled was in a secret layer. I bought a Kaleidoscope Killers um, secret layer, and uh, if you didn't know, some some of the secret layers have uh, stained glass planeswalkers in them. And I pulled a Teferi Time Reveler, uh, stained glass version, obviously. And at the time, it was around sixty bucks. So. Uh, 60 70 bucks um it's not that much anymore now we're near that actually it's uh very way cheaper so um but other than that uh i pulled a armageddon masterpiece which i have mentioned on the channel before and that one was around um well, i mean at the time that i pulled it was around 30 but right now it's around 60 so kind of kind of switched so yeah yeah so uh that's about it for the video um, do you have, have any, you pulled any expensive yeah, cards? Have you, if you ever if you ever pulled any expensive cards from the list or just in general, please let us know because it's always interesting hearing um, those uh, stories. You all know that one person who pulls a lot of very expensive cards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chad. Chad. Chad, you're watching, Chad. You know, you know, you know. So, um, yeah. So if you ever pulled any expensive cards, please let us know. Uh, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps a lot. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Um, it's at uh, at the Commanders Coalition. Follow us on Twitter at at the EDH Coalition. Um, and yeah, so share it with your friends and have a good day, I guess.
बाय बाय